Welcome back class to another session. Um, I want you to take a look at this definition that we have here. The stage of human, social, and cultural development and organization that is considered most advanced. Think for a second what you think this may be describing. If you said civilization, you are absolutely correct. So uh, that's what we're going to be speaking about today, which is civilization, how it came about. Um, when we last spoke, we were talking about Paleolithic people. And then we talked about the transition to Neolithic people. And one consequence of settling down and farming is that we can develop these elements that we call civilization. So let's take a look at some of these. Um, think for a moment, let's brainstorm. What is civilization? What are the features that make up civilization? What are those things that are necessary in order for something to be considered a civilization uh, that you absolutely cannot do without? Take a moment, pause the video if you have to. Think about those features. Here we have four early river valley civilizations, and we will eventually talk about all of these in turn. But notice that the chart has, uh, you know, in these three categories, several similarities. Identify some of those similarities that exist in all of these disparate civilizations from Sumer in Mesopotamia to Egypt to the Indus River Valley, all the way to the Yellow River in China. What do these places have in common? So some of these features uh, that they have in common are advanced cities. They have to have complex institutions, meaning uh, governments, religions, economies, um, education systems, anything like that. Specialized workers, uh, particularly artisans. Um, so again, remember from Paleolithic times, we had hunter or gatherer. Um, you were limited to those occupations. And then as we move into the Neolithic revolution, fewer people need to farm, uh, you can get specialized workers. Uh, public works, you can build walls around cities, you can build canals for uh, drinking water, etc. Art and architecture, um, well, I think that's self-explanatory. Uh, record keeping in the form of writing. So once we begin uh, creating surpluses of the food we're growing, um, we need to keep records of how much we've done and who we may trade with. And there's the inevitable formation of social classes. Uh, so these are just a few of the features of what we call civilization. Here we see an image of Scarabray in Scotland. These are the remains of a Neolithic village. Um, you can see that it's mostly subterranean carved out in the hillside here. Um, there is uh, the settlement of Chatel Huyuk, which is located in present-day Turkey. Um, this is uh, a one of the first permanent settlements, and it's uh, unique in that, um, like Scarabray, it's mostly subterranean, but um, residents would exit through the roof of their homes. Um, you can see there on the left, uh, sort of a recreation of what the um, facilities would look like. You had a, a mat for sleeping on, you had a hearth to keep a fire, and then you would exit through the ceiling. Um, again, notice uh, the, um, the artwork created. We've seen works like this in Paleolithic people. Um, this is a mother goddess that comes from the same village. Um, 
think about what this must mean um, for the people of Chital Hoyok um, in terms of gender relations, in terms of religious practice. Here we have a recreation of the ancient city of Jericho, which is largely considered to be one of the oldest villages in history, uh, somewhere around 9,000. So the city that we're going to focus on uh, primarily today is the city of Ur in Sumer. Uh, Sumer, of course, is one of the city-states uh, within Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers, Meso between Potamoi in Greek is the rivers. Um, so the city of Ur is located on the Euphrates River, right? The Tigris and the Euphrates make up the two rivers that are described in Mesopotamia. Uh, it has a population of uh, around 30,000 individuals at its height. Um, so this is no small city. Um, and they're known for their temple structures, known as ziggurats, um, that would have been in the city square. Um, these are some characteristics of civilization in Sumer. And notice the similarity to the, um, the general characteristics of civilization that we spoke about earlier. Um, specialized work, record keeping, different technologies, advanced cities, complex institutions. Um, these features are um, true almost universally in places that we consider civilized. So the Fertile Crescent becomes known as the cradle of civilization. Some of the earliest um, city-states and empires arrive or arise in this area. Um, it's known as the Fertile Crescent for some maybe obvious reasons, but you can see the shape in green here is crescent-shaped. Uh, it's the Fertile Crescent because um, the soil is fertile enough for growing. Um, it is one of the earliest places that agriculture is recorded. And um, these uh, early empires will arise out of this area. You can see on the map here, Sumer in the south, Akkad here in the center, the Akkadians and the Assyrians further north. All of these would create powerful empires. And let's not forget about the Phoenicians or the Philistines, the Palestinians. Um, all of these will become great empires in their own time. So this area here is what we're calling Mesopotamia, that part of the Fertile Crescent there, um, and particularly looking at Sumer. Take a look at these images of uh, what remains of the city of Ur, make three observations based on the text. Pause the video if you have to. Let's do a quick review question. On which continent did humans first appear based on this map? So this would be a question about Paleolithic peoples. If you said D, you are correct. Africa is the right answer. Um, summarize in your notes, what features did early civilizations have in common as they developed around the world? Think about those features. And then once you have those features down, I'm going to present to you a problem. The problem of Gobekli Tepe. So Gobekli Tepe is a um, is an archaeological site in modern day Turkey, uh, and the reason why it's a problem is because we've been talking about the Neolithic Revolution and how uh, it was this Neolithic Revolution that gave birth 
to civilization, right? Once people were able to settle down, able to grow crops, able to relieve themselves from the daily drudgery of hunting and gathering, they were free to become skilled artisans, to pursue other endeavors, to settle down and, and gain the fruits of civilization. Well, Gobekli Tepe uh, was built roughly 12,000 years ago. Uh, so this would be the oldest site that we know of. Um, Archaeologists believe that this would be a temple structure. Um, it's very mysterious. We know that at some point after thousands of years of nomadic hunters and gatherers uh, going to this site, it was intentionally buried. Um, why it was buried, we have no idea, but uh, they can tell from uh, soil samples that it was in fact buried. If we look at the stones that make up uh, some of the outer structure, you could see that they're carved in relief, meaning that the objects that are being carved stick out in 3D, which is much more difficult than uh, carving into the stone. Um, so this is fairly advanced, and yet these people had no metal tools that we know of. Um, each of these stones weighs many tons, 40 to 60 tons. Uh, the site has still not been completely unearthed. Um, they've been working at it for a few decades now. But what do you think? Uh, does this constitute civilization? Were the nomadic hunter-gatherers that uh, were responsible for creating Gobekli Tepe, worshiping at Gobekli Tepe, civilized? And if so, how did they compare to the Mesopotamians that you read about in your chapter? Um, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Have a great day, students.